<laughs> I'm landing on a little, little like groove pocket. Yeah, yeah. Just being like, that's it, baby. We found the groove. We're done. <laughs> What's yeah. the goal of every every yeah. part, you know? <laughs> I got I got my 20 second loop. I'm good, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's like 15 minutes of, of looking for it, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's just like anything in life, right? You spend your whole whole life looking for a thing, and then yeah. you get it, and then you, you pass away. Check out, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get out while it's hot. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, did you ever think, uh, we're really, we're going to go off now. Um, did you ever, like, think about ways that you like a like a Tom Sawyer sort of thing like ways you would want to be celebrated uh if you were to uh, be presumed dead yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not dead just but not presumed, dead yeah, yeah you get to witness dead. it yeah yeah, yeah 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 um no no <laughs> I've not really ever thought about that I mean I guess like I I'd, I I I don't want like a like a funeral tombstone like, like I just want to like if, if, if it was legal to do so, just sort of like take my body wherever it is and just kind of like put it out in the yard somewhere. Just like, like, all right, there we go. Just put that over there and just let it, you know, yeah. just done, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is true in Portugal, but here you have to register as a like cemetery. Okay. To like even on your own property to, okay. to be buried there. You have to register it as a family cemetery. Wow. Um, so yeah, they just like keep fucking paperwork on you. Yeah, I mean, time. I imagine it's not that simple. You can't just like, you know, yeah. like, yeah. a, a body needs to be accounted for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Unless yeah, yeah. you're a murderer, then you really hope it doesn't. Or, I mean, that's where the presumption comes in, I guess. Like, we could just do that and then just like, we never know. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, so yeah, there's, yeah. I guess there's that, you know. Like yeah. That's, that's yeah. an option. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, how many bar- bodies do you think are married? No, no. no, 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 no. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wait, I was talking with somebody yesterday actually about like the question of whether, um, like they had, they had accidentally said the phrase, uh, uh, one day I hope we come up with the technology so that you can just, yeah, place a body in the ground and that's it. And mm. it, it was a funny kind of like <laughs> thing to like this future forward wishing yeah, yeah. always gets framed yeah, yeah. through the lens of like a technological advance. Yeah, and yeah. Whereas like the, the, the thing is really just a, a question of mindset, right? It's just like, yeah, if we shift our mentality about how we bury people and mm. like we remove the industry of uh, 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 post-mortem, then mm. uh, yeah, we'd probably be okay with it. It doesn't require a technological advance, but... I am curious, uh, okay. bringing it around. Yeah, yeah. We're really, uh, <laughs> um, do, where do you feel in your process you uh, use technology to solve something that you ran across uh, uh, in your like uh, acoustic only mm. days? Yeah, I mean, I guess there's like a twofold. One would be the, I mean, I guess a very zoomed out blanket them as like, coloring the acoustic sound so like effects yeah, basically yeah, yeah. or smearing acoustic stuff in time which would be sampling mm, mm-hmm. you know to kind of like uh, very macro it with acoustic stuff particularly drum oriented things there's very little that i could do processing wise that would mask the acoustic sound of the hit yeah. so like i can i can kind of augment it but like it's it's like the wet dry blend can never go wet right with something like drums at least right right um so that makes for um i guess certain kinds of things are more functional in terms of a- affecting timbre. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of an interesting one, specifically with this. Like if it's like a quieter instrument, or even like with a melodica or a piano or a, a guitar, or acoustic guitar, like it's not nearly as loud as the initial transient, you know? Yeah. And yeah. because the transient disappears very quickly, yeah. the, the sort of your, your perceptual impact is that. Yeah. Um, whereas like a guitar pick, like even an acoustic guitar, like the initial attack is fairly loud, but the sustain dies very, very quickly. So yeah. you can therefore mask that acoustic sound with a, a fully affected sound in yeah. a way that you can't so readily do with this because often it's just over. Right. And, but I mean, like, yeah, and if you are like using like an electric guitar, then like the, the ratio between a uh, thing I've done and thing you hear is so like an order of magnitude different like mm. whereas a drum it's like yeah yeah you can mic this but like it on its own if you hit it real hard mm. 
then you hear it throughout the room without any assistance. But like yeah, yeah. an electric guitar, like, yeah, you can cheat it. You can kind of like give it a, give it a thwack and you can have a pedal that yeah, acts yeah. as an intermediary to be like, yeah. and the swell, even though the thing itself made as much sound as it can. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like 40 feet away, you wouldn't hear that initial thwonk. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, this is tangent off a of tangent, but yeah. uh, it's interesting now with like YouTube videos and people, you know, like, like so take something like a metal guitar, like kind of mm. type mm. things. Um, typically, you don't hear any acoustic <laughs> sound at all, but often, like, yeah. if, if there's some video and they're like, oh, yeah, I've done this thing, like, yeah, but because yeah. they have a room mic and they're talking, in addition to hearing the type sound, you also hear the pick slap right. acoustic sound of an electric guitar, right. which is what, as a performer, you often hear, unless yeah. you're like in like in mega loud amps, but like if you're yeah, in a room, yeah. you hear that, and yeah. that's part of the sound of the instrument in a way that um, typically is not heard, but with neo me like meditization of how this stuff like viewing someone doing that yeah um you do hear that and it's a sound that i think is kind of cool hearing specifically distorted guitar but with the acoustic pick slap of a yeah. string yeah, yeah, um yeah, yeah, yeah. it could be because i like i grew up playing guitar so that I'm, i like that sound and i know that sound but it's like uh it's a different thing a buddy of mine was doing a like a performance stuff where he, he was doing stuff with like either violin or, or acoustic instruments, but with like a Boss DD6 looper, which kind of does that sort of stuttering, like you push it and yeah. for the time it's held, then you release it and you go like, right. and uh, he had done some stuff with like a code based version because that's just literally digital yeah. delay stutter stuff. It's not, uh, it's, there's nothing analog about the pedal. Um, and he ended up going back to the physical pedal and using it. And you know, like some time later, and he's like, oh man, I was thinking about that. And the reason why he did that is because the acoustic sound of pushing the, in the room, yeah. you get this like, yeah. like, like, yeah. like particularly boss pedals, like yeah. they kind of like bottom out in a very right. aggressive acoustic way that was missing when it was just the, like a MIDI controller and you just had like a silent thing and you only heard yeah. the as yeah. opposed to like, yeah. Yeah. which was kind of an interesting thing about like the acoustic artifacts of digital processes. Yeah, right? yeah. Wait, like, okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> it's gonna come back to you. Uh, so uh, you're the first thing that I found kind of like in this world was Party Van, which mm -hmm. is a, a software, like uh, not even like facsimile or like metaphor even, just like a, 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 a kin to a piece of hardware that I had like come across mm. uh, uh, researching like how do people like fuck around with samples that isn't just like a looper mm. um, with the where's the party at sampler yeah. and so I am curious like as as your your like mythology in my brain is always tied to this piece of hardware yeah. <laughs> that has become like it isn't like part of your kit it's no, not no. like relevant in the conversation about your work now um, mm. but do you find like as you dig into Okay, right, because you also have like a bunch of like modeling stuff with uh, 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 Block Party. Like mm. you have those little modules where uh, the type of uh, compression oh, and yeah, distortion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How often do you find that you create the digital version of a thing the way that you like to use it? How often do you revisit the physical? Uh, um, depends. So like as of late, I've been doing a bunch of updates for what will be another version of SV Tools at some point. Yeah. And for that, I've been making some synthesis stuff. So I've been like, and some of these models I have, either hardware or, or Euro module or whatever. So with that, I do do some comparison of like ranges and edge behaviors, you know, to, sure. but that's a specific um, type of thing I'm doing. Yeah. But for, yeah. I guess to maybe more answer, I guess where the question is coming from, with that sampler, like the Where's the Party at sampler, one of the things that I really liked about it, and I think it's probably one of the things that drew me to it, is that in addition to all the things that it did of sampling and mm. looping and all that kind of stuff, um, the clock was exposed mm. as a knob, mm. which meant like like you mm. could pitch things down, but that's something different than playing back a sample slower. Yeah, and it's something that like that, like that can't do. Like typically, yeah. computers are not built to mess with the clock speed. Right. Um, so a lot of stuff in in what I've done of the software emulation of of it it does do that so like as you turn the speed the playback speed down the bit depth reduces as well and like yeah. the, like other things I, I try to impart that character which i think is atypical of what you can do with computation just because that's just not how computers work right. but also the the overall macro behavior of a system like where like with an acoustic instrument or something like that like a process may be happening but you 
everything's like multi-dimensional. You can't just affect pitch or, or whatever. And right. I, I'm not like a purist right. where like that needs to be like always multi-dimensional, but there's like an intrinsic uh, inter interwovenness with a lot of acoustic phenomena just because of yeah. physics and stuff. Yeah. But with, with um, digital stuff, it's very, or synthesis in general, it's very easy to affect just pitch or just amplitude right. or just filter right. in a way that um, is both powerful, but also for me, not exciting for sure like I, I don't like that micromanaging and like i think all the synthesis stuff i do is um things that don't do that yeah. but more specifically i like how the um, there's some kind of parameter that affects how everything behaves not just mm. a parameter mm. and not yeah, just yeah, yeah. a macro like it's not one knob that's controlling timbre and pitch like right. it, it's 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 affecting like like I, like as if I'm detuning this drum and like I don't want to lower the pitch of the sample playback, but the drum it, like the head got floppier, it would physically behave differently. Yeah. In a yeah. way that would be kind of interesting. So like yeah. if there would be like a kind of a thing here where I could like like a timpani or something, the head could go all floppy, that would be really interesting and very very different from having um, pitch to sample playback. Yeah. Yeah. So that distinction is something that I I think is probably one of the things that originally drew me to that hardware. Um, but also something that I very much carried forward even now. Yeah. So like, like 10, 15 years later or whatever coding, yeah. that that little germ is still a consideration. Like yeah. like it's how does the system change? How does it behave? How does it transform in a way that's um, complex but yeah. interesting? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's a really cool idea. I love the... Because I think each one of these pieces like tends to get um, kind of subsumed into... Like, like if, 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 if we were doing this five years ago, I probably have like four more things. <laughs> um, and so like any one part becomes part of what I assume a whole system needs to be rather than focusing in on like, okay, how do I, how do I make one piece of it? Not like sound organic, but respond organically mm. is like such a critical component for like performance and improvisation, especially yeah. to... Uh, I think like long-term interest on the on the um, part of the performer, like mm. the thing needs to feel like it bends and changes yeah. underneath you. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So maybe kind of like a, a, a question, like yeah. on 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 your setup in terms of, I guess, live sampling or recording or, or capturing audio. Yeah. Do you? Is this kind of like? The way that you've set it up in your um, cheat codes is—is is yeah. it like a, a kind of a modal system? Meaning that, like, are you now recording and now you're playing, and those are like separate things? Yeah, they're not always. They can be separate things, or there can just be actually, yeah, like the buffer's been running the whole time. <laughs> um, uh, it it there needs to be. I have found for me, there does need to be one constant. And then there can be like 15 things that change. Okay. And like I, the way that my, um, the improv muscle groups that I, I care to develop are like, I, I have to have something that I know is true and sure. Um, even if it's only 10% of the mm. system and everything else is shifting around and everything else is unsteady. Uh, if I have something I know I can affect very quickly or return to very quickly, then that becomes uh, like a safety net. Um, mm. And so for me, yeah, like the, the uh, specific to cheat codes, the record head always stays constant, doesn't okay. get changed uh, is and the way that I set up for this was to um, just have like a bounded like 15 second just like loop that just continues to go through and then I can change all the windows and mm. I can uh, uh, randomize uh, pitches and randomize envelopes and randomize the playback there and just smush the keys uh, to get um, snippets um, mm. but if I want to I can just like press one button and everything will just like evenly distribute across yeah, okay. the sample again. Um, so I like, yeah, I like having, yeah, something that's reliable yeah, yeah. Um, underneath everything. Yeah, that, that, that's an yeah. interesting idea of having this, because that, that's something that I've struggled is not the right word, but it, it's, a, it's a, a contention that needs to be made of, of like that modality in improv. Yeah. Because yeah. it, yeah. like, it, it's, yeah. it's not necessarily useful to be like, hold on, wait, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and now and now go like that. That's not a very useful. Yeah, I mean, we should always be listening, but like like yeah. that sort of 
of turning off of things. Mm -hmm. And this, mm -hmm. I guess, circular buffer type thing is, is, a, yeah. a, is a, a good solution to negotiate that where there is something like you don't have to stop yeah. to record, you know? Well, you're also always trans... Like, if we think about, like, comedic improv uh, or, like, improv uh, with words rather than music, mm -hmm. like, uh, every part of your presence in forms, even if you're not saying anything, the way that you hold yourself, the mm. body language that you, uh, the look on your face, what the fuck mm. ever, um, where you're directing your attention, mm. uh, uh, all of those things the audience sees. And so it becomes part of their, uh, like Rolodex of possibilities for mm. where the scene is going to go. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is interesting, like doing something like this, where it's like, there isn't anyone but us, uh, mm. and, and the audience is not in real time. They're asynchronous. Mm. And so anything that somebody might be thinking uh, could happen next or should happen next, we don't get that feedback um, in, yeah. in this kind of situation. Yeah. Um, but we're still improvising together. And yeah, so like yeah. it becomes very much like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I love listening to um, the, like when I got into like micro loop territory and then I would pull off then you kicked in yeah, yeah. micro loop territory. And yeah, it was yeah. cool to like agree and mm. get in the boat on yeah, yeah. micro loops, you know? And it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a thing we can do. And we're going, we're going to, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. always have that. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that, that was a yeah. cool moment that arrived because I think there wasn't like, it didn't arrive via like Mickey Mousing. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. kind of like, it's sort of like emerged as like a, because yeah. that, that could be very banal in, in improv, like, totally. you know, yeah. um, all forms. But it just sort of kind of emerged, and then it was like th that was the game for that moment, yeah. and it, and it kind of worked, yeah. And then it, then it yeah. kind of moved on, but like it was yeah. it was a kind of a cool emergent yep. game that wasn't in in my um, memory of it. This may or may not be accurate. Well, we'll there, it wasn't really set up, like it yeah. wasn't like a do 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 do. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Like it just kind yeah. of like we both yeah. ended up in that language at the same time. Yeah. And then one of us stopped and the other one carried on and it was like, oh, okay. Right. And like the sort of the game just happened. Yeah. Which is yeah. cool and uh, to then go with it, you know, like yeah. both of us, I guess, have enough experience to, yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. do know what to do in a circumstance like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like that framing of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like um, when I did like theater and shit and like college and stuff. Um, whenever I would like direct, you know, people get like really self-serious about the whole thing. You know, we've, we've rehearsed for months and then mm -hmm. we're about to do the show and um, like we would, we would gather together and it's like, all right, we got, we're, it's, it's opening night. We're going to like have a, a military style conference right now, you know? <laughs> um, but it would always like, we'd always just end with like, cool, they're called plays for a reason. Mm. Um, so we should do that. We should have fun, uh, <laughs> like trust, all of the and it's it's funny when you like get into improvising especially with technology um you are relying on like years and decades mm. of uh not only knowing the interface but having created the 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 bounds of the playground um mm. and so there but it is a, i don't know if this is true for you but like sometimes you know like even just thinking about going into today i was like ah oh, shit do i know do i know what to do and i'm like well Motherfucker, you you made the thing you're using. Uh, so if it doesn't do what you need it to do, then then you know what you want to do next, what you want it to, how it should shift and change. Yeah. Um, and that like then put me into uh, being excited for mm. finding the edges because uh, the edges are informative. Like mm. when you can't do something with something you made or a, a, a system, I'm sure like mm. having iterated fucking like what ten different public versions of SP tools at this <laughs> point now. Uh, coming into like a whole new release like yeah like playing with it and finding where it doesn't meet your need in the moment mm. very different from like the planning in a workshop or studio yeah. where you're like yeah, yeah yeah i think these are all the things that i want to do and then you get through 150 yeah, yeah. little things that you think it should do and then mm. you end up finding like another and another yeah i mean let me ask you there like i, I guess I'll, I'll i'll ask the coder version of you like yeah. When something like that happens, like where there's a thing that you wish it did and it didn't, mm. does that always mean adding a thing or is there bounds to like, is mm. there, um, to, I guess like pre couch the question, mm. like something that does everything does really nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, like yeah. what, where do you draw that distinction of like, oh, I wish I could have done like, I wish right now this was, like, made of grape jelly or whatever, but, like, <laughs> but it's not important for me to set up a system where that's possible. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now I got fucking grape jelly drum. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, yeah, no, I think, but I, but I do think that there always needs to be a mechanism of like not self analysis, but like a little bit like um, uh, like carrying a bit of skepticism hmm. about your own, you know. And like this is a useful thing once you get past your uh, beginner kind of like experiences doing improv you're like everything i do is either fucking brilliant or fucking sucks yeah um and as soon as you can find kind of like consistency then like that critical voice that self-critical voice is really helpful mm -hmm. and to to be able to um be like yeah no i really i in this one moment i really wanted to do blank mm. um and i couldn't do blank do i spend a, a couple of hours making blank possible um and it's just like analyzing maybe it was through the conversation uh, mm. with a particular person that you're playing with or improvising with. And like, if that's important to a uh, continued collaboration, then like, sure, yeah. Um, but it's also cool to just like tease out the edges and be like, great, there's still so much rad territory. Yeah. Um, and you just like log those things and then just keep them as like high watermarks of um, deviation mm. uh, to be like, yeah, okay, if I come to that impulse 10 more times, then clearly it is canonical within me. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, when you like build your own tools, like if something is canonical within you, then it's like, yeah, make it make it a thing that's external yeah. that you get to play with. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting one because I think there's there's no correct answer or there's no mm. answer to that question. I mm -hmm. think that's like it's like a philosophical thing of like you know one hand clapping type of thing. Yeah, yeah. But. It's something that I sometimes think about as like someone who releases software but also uses the software that I make. Because yeah. um, there's, there's like, let's say, you know, we're playing and there's something that I would have liked to have happened. I have multiple um, ways to approach that. So yeah. it could be like myself as a performer, as an improviser, now doing something about that. Yeah. So I can, I can yeah. sort of affect that or I can think about, okay, I wish that I, you know, the code would do the thing that I wanted it. Yeah. So that there's multiple, um, there's no, uh, I could fix it mm. in different ways. Mm. So sometimes it's like, okay, like I, I would just do myself as an improviser, do something different next time. Mm. If, if that circumstance arises again, versus like, okay, this is something that at like a code level should yeah. behave differently yeah. and I, I will change that. Yeah. And I think for that one, there's, there's some, for me, there's, I guess, like a, a little bit of a, a, an easy out in that, like, is it generalizable and, and like, will someone else want to do that, I think? Yeah. In which case, maybe I'll put that in the code. Yeah. And if it's not, then like, fuck it. It's, it's just all, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And it doesn't have to do with the, like, what, what I expect to code, which I think would be different if it was like, I wasn't sharing code. Sure. You know, because then like, it's, it's not just me. It, it's like, there's like a, a, a relationship there. Yeah. Know? And I guess... This is kind of an unfair question to ask you, but I'm going to. Mm -hmm. um, because there's this like folding in just on my own kind of like personal history of like the block party, mm. a project that like was like time boxed in a lot mm. of ways and energetically and like, you know, like uh, I don't think it's going to kind of get more yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah. but was such a fucking road sign for me. Mm. Uh, and like that, that's what I used to understand what I wanted to do with samples and like what I wanted to do in uh, collaborative improvisation um, mm. with other musicians and like how I wanted the signal flow to work um, and what I could like allow myself to not care about and what I wanted to root into um, because you had placed all of these little uh, starting points uh, in that piece of software and like it. So I, 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 yeah, like I almost wonder if uh, everything needs to be like polished and finished in mm. order for it to be worth kind of like putting out there and be like, hey, like it's it it it, it uh, there's a, a ceiling on how many of whatever's you can instantiate or like how long you can use it without something going weird yeah, or whatever, yeah. um, but this points to an idea that doesn't have concrete playability mm. anywhere else and I don't know how to really like bring it all the way home to make yeah. it a final thing but I, I yeah I like think that especially within the community that surrounds Norns like there's such a like I have to make a product energy mm. <laughs> whenever someone's like I have a I, I want to make a script and mm. it's like great I need to support 
15 pieces of hardware I do not have myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then that like stands in the way. Mm. And I think that that's such a, um, yeah, it like becomes a bit of a, a tragedy of energy exchange or like missed opportunity for energy exchange where someone can be like, I spent enough time to put something together that was important to me mm. at this point in time. Um, and I can't take it any further. So here is the idea. Yeah, yeah. I think it's powerful. Yeah. I mean, it's a funky one because like I've, I've, there's a lot of um, big or in varying size software projects that I've made over the years that are uh, essentially abandonware at the moment, yeah. like Party Band being one of them, yeah. Block Party and um, some other ones. But that's mainly just because OS and Mac, Mac changes were like, it, it would be a, a, a really big job to make them yeah. work now. Yeah. yeah, and and since yeah. I personally don't use them anymore, yeah. Although I did use Party Van like still fairly actively, like till like maybe three or four years ago. Like if I was doing like a, a kind of a big performance or, or like playing with something, like it was it was still like a good like Swiss Army thing. Yeah. Now I've kind of moved away from that, where I, I don't I don't have a Swiss Army. Like even this this setup, I, I don't have a Swiss. Like I can only do yeah. a finite amount of things. Yeah. And yeah. I've kind of gravitated more towards that approach. But something like Block Party was interesting in that I, I spent a lot of time thinking that like fingering system. Yeah. And like yeah, that was like a cool like, because yeah. it was just like the, the 128 or whatever I had yeah. gotten one. And like it, it was at that point, it was too many buttons to like this one is record. This one is play. It's like I can't like, you yeah. know, I mean, I'm good at memorizing that, but like it's it's that's, that's not appropriate. Like yeah. it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, so like yeah. thinking of ways to negotiate that where you don't have to. And then it, the plan was to do like a party band too. That's where that was going. And right. I was like, okay, this is like a good interim. This is cool and it does the things that I wanted to do. Right. People could maybe use this. Right. And yeah. and then kind of put it out there. And then I ended up for other various reasons, like not building party band too much further beyond that. Like I mm. sort of I did build it and I have a patch of it, but it sort of stalled out. Yeah. And then seeing what you did with it, like I was like, oh, right, that's mm. fucking great. That's like better. Like, <laughs> like it needn't it needn't be the like uh, yeah, no. like what what I had going. But like it, it was a cool. Yeah. I'm glad that 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 like um, that that idea was of inspiration and has yeah. like manifested in like a very like rich and robust yeah. system. You know. Yeah. So like I'm I'm nice. super pleased. Like it, it like mm -hmm. I don't need to do it anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you've done it. You know. No, no, yeah. No, and I feel that way about like. Yeah, so many things that have happened in the last five years, just in this like, you know, specific ecosystem. Mm. Um, that, yeah, it's cool. It's cool that uh, you know the open source piece, not from a standpoint of like, cool, this is the free app box, but like from the from the point of being like, yeah, if somebody is inspired artistically from what someone else does, mm. then yeah, you can crack it open and see how it works, and like mm. maybe you can adapt it, and maybe you don't have the like command of the language yet. But it's so powerful to be able to look at the guts of a thing mm. and be like, oh, cool. This is how this person's brain works because I already agree, you know, and like with you, it was like, I already agreed with you, you know, <laughs> like I, the things that you made, uh, I was, because they addressed a, a, a landscape of possibility that I was interested in exploring and I could get into the guts and see how your brain got mm. from point A to point Z, mm. Z. Um, mm -hmm. it's really, really heartening and mm. like really energizing mm. to be like, yeah, man, maybe me the fuck too. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I can because uh, another weirdo like me uh, has a shit ton more skills and maybe I can get there. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, like specifically you, you, you help people do that mm. as well. Like yeah, yeah. GibGab and like all that shit. Yeah. Um, which is a really cool mechanism. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> coffee, coffee pour, coffee shot. Yeah. Kelly Kane ceramics. <laughs> <laughs> Love brands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Mm. Shall we play a bit more? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.